Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 39. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. This H Y M P E is Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Episode 39, special guest in the building. Before I run through the rap sheet, introduce yourself to the audience. All right. I'm CT. Uh, my government name, Corey E. Thomas, but everybody called me CT. Live down here in Atlanta. I started Wilder Dreams Achieve LLC and started a whole movement with Juneteenth Culture Explosion. Copy that. We're going to dive in a little bit of that once we slide through the episode. But y'all know how it go. Every time we come back with a new block of recordings, we got special announcements. Another announcement now. Mondays, we are now on the E-Block Radio Network out of Detroit. 2 p.m. every Monday on the E-Block Radio Network out of Detroit. Uh, As you know, though, Tuesdays, GFT Radio Network. That's 2 o'clock. Wednesdays, that's the Kickback app. That's 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, Thursdays, we GFT. Damn, I always switch up to Thursdays. My bad. T, I'm keep fucking this one up. <laughs> WTNUPhilly.com on Thursdays at 1230. And the I Say Podcast Radio Network on Fridays at 10 a.m. Then we go Saturdays to the THC Radio Network at 10 a.m. International hype is not just a hashtag. This is a way of life. Also, H2H Cleaning. H2H Cleaning is my cleaning company. You follow me there on Instagram at H2H Cleaning and at Custom Hustle Jerseys. That's my clothing line. You pick your own number. You pick your own color sizes. I got the kids' joints. The only thing I ain't got is baby sizes. Out of town, I can ship it out of town. Cost you a little extra for your shipping and handling. Internationally, cost you a little extra for your shipping and handling. All right. And we got some more shit that I'm working on, y'all. I'm telling you, working on the monster head. All right. Let's go. Here we go. Episode 39. CT. Topic of the day is... What's the best way for us to support each other? Everybody wants to be an entrepreneur these days. What's the best way for us to support everybody's business endeavors and ventures? You know what, man? It's something that really need to be talked about and harp on. Person, I think one of the best way to support one another is respect what we're doing. And also, don't be stingy with the knowledge. And then the presentation of the knowledge. You know how some people like to say things that make themselves say it's smarter, but it really just like handing a person this, hey, this is how I did this. Get the difference between the LLC, a 501c3. This is the loophole that you can get around. This is the brother that helped put my stuff together on a legal aspect. But pretty much respect what we're doing and share that knowledge. Like, give the knowledge, not hold on to it. Let's, let's share that with one another. And that's how we can, you know, really support one another. Hey, bro. <laughs> this is how much shit I be having. And I don't be writing none of my shit written down. I ain't got no script. This is all off the top. I forgot about this, and you just said this, which is a great segue for me. How to Hustle Seminars. How to Hustle Seminars is starting on November the 7th. Every Sunday for those, the next five weeks, it will be um, doing How to Hustle Seminars. It'll be me breaking down different aspects of how you how do you build your brand, how do you build your relationships, the importance of your hashtags, the importance of a bunch of different things. Because How to Hustle mm. Seminars it will be running for five weeks from November the 7th to December the 5th. Uh, even if you don't get on the joint live and you on there, I can sell you the archives too. Hit me up uh, for how you pay for the situation. But yes, how to hustle seminars. The reason I started doing the how to hustle seminars is like you just said, people always tell me you be having so much game that you be giving and you be having so much good information that you be giving out to people. Cause I always tell them like, I've been doing this shit for four years. It'll be five years next year. And it was like, I wish I had somebody there in the beginning to help me along, explain this stuff to me, break it down to me. Like, this is this is why you should do this. This is why you should do that. This is why you don't do this. This is why you should. Like, you need somebody to help you along. And that's perfectly fine for you to have somebody to put you on that game. Because the way that I feel about it is if I got more knowledge than you about it, then I'm going to try to help you along. If you got more knowledge than me, please give it to me. If this is your lane, bring me along with it. Let me know what I'm doing wrong. Don't just let me do the shit wrong so you can talk about me and say, yeah. oh, this nigga think yeah. you know what the fuck he doing, which is what most people yeah. are doing, so that shit. Yeah. But, um, so then, true. Uh, the way I would say the best way for us to support each other is respect everybody's time and respect everybody's effort, efforts. You ain't going at Gucci saying, these fucking flip-flops cost too much, can I get these joints for $200 less? 
So don't come at me for a jersey saying, and I get these drinks for less. People got clothing lines and shit. Niggas always wanted to, want you to look out for them. But again, you got no problem going to Gucci or whoever the fuck else to spend way too much money for some bullshit. So Thanks. the best way for us to always do that, like if I got a studio and you want to come down and record, don't try to hit me with the what's the deal because you my man. This is business. This is not personal. Business is never personal. Mm-hmm. It's just always business. We got to treat it like such. Because if it was somebody else, you're not coming at them with the what's the deal situation. So the best way for us to do that is to, is to be honest in them situations, to respect that situation, and to literally try to support it. If you don't, if somebody's doing something and it's like, all right, that ain't for me, it costs you nothing. It's put a heart under the picture for you to like the picture, for you to share the picture. Like, it costs mm-hmm. you nothing to do that. Just because that's your man, it's like, all right, I know that this ain't my lane, but that's his shit. That's my man, and I really fuck with him. All right, yeah, let's try to help him out with that. Because somebody else that's exactly. following you might say, oh, damn, this is the shit that I love and been waiting to hear about. I've been waiting to do. Like, this is the type of restaurant I wanted to go to. These are the type of clothes that I like. You know what I'm saying? These are the type of books that I like to read. Like, so mm-hmm. if you if you even try to make even, that's the smallest like uh, effort that you could ever even put into somebody else's situation or, ener- or energy that you could put in somebody else's situation is the two seconds it takes you to hit the like button. You on Instagram all fucking day, niggas is telling Rick Ross happy birthday and telling Jada. And don't even birthday. know him. <laughs> you don't know that, nigga. This is the yeah, four thousandth comment. The four thousandth comment on here. You saying happy birthday to my man? You don't know that nigga. That ain't your man's if you don't know him like that. But the nigga who helped you lift the couch out of your crib, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can't get him now. What they say? You doing it for clout? They chasing that clout. The nigga who helped you lift that couch out the crib is doing a podcast, and you like, oh no, a podcast ain't my shit. But then you come telling him about Joe Buttons that you just listened to. <laughs> like, but, yeah, but podcast ain't finished. your stuff. But podcast ain't your shit. Yeah, you like, yeah, you know, we talked about that three weeks in a row on my drink cast. Like, yeah, <laughs> I hate like my old maintenance board, my old spot. He used to always want to come talk about the Sixers. This is when my podcast used to be strictly about sports. And it was like, bro, we talk about that every week. We got live calls and all of that. Nigga, you can call in and talk about this shit. What I don't want to yeah. do is talk about it again now. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, like I said, man, everybody wants to be an entrepreneur these days, and that's great. But yeah. uh, we got to understand that somebody has to be a customer. If everybody's an entrepreneur and nobody's supporting everybody's shit, then what are we doing? We all just wasted money just to say we got some shit in our name. It's almost like a bad, like, and, and that's, and you just hit a key point. You say uh, everybody want to be an entrepreneur, but nobody want to be a customer. A lot of people do things to outdo the next and they, they, they take out the love yep. aspect, like going back to the, like you said, the person that don't want to, Live to your podcast, but they might go live in Joe Bud, but they fail to realize they're always a genius to everything. They're always a start. And the beautiful thing about it, when you get asked to be with somebody, I said, man, I was there when bro first started that. I was there when bro was doing that thing, man. I remember bro was just here. Now he did. He went from one light to a thousand lights to a million lights to shopping around. Cause like ever since I saw um, what you did with Casey and J Moon, I said, man, that's dope. And I love the first thing I did. Podcast. Man, shout out to the bro podcast. And get what I did. I shared it with people, like my people. Because the thing about it, I always tell folks what I don't know, I might know somebody that do. Because I never make it seem like I know this and know that. Hmm, such such might know that. Let me get you to such such, if he don't mind. Or uh, let me do this right here. Because I never say it just like, oh, uh, like with Rick, with Rick Ross. So me and Rick been knowing each other for uh, we been Hold conversing on. one another for about guys. Wait, wait, wait. Yes. Explain that this is the real Rick Ross. Yeah, not, uh, yeah, not officer, not <laughs> officer, uh, whatever his name is. Yeah, so not the rapper, but the authentic, the real free Ray Ricky Ross. Copy very, that. There you go. The, he's a very authentic guy, man. Because when I was doing what I was doing, he was like this. Show, you know, he was like this. You, I said, yeah, this, this is me. He said, put me on. I'm going to be down now. And then I said, hey, I was on this podcast. And he like, the manager like, you know, shoot me this. Okay, next thing you know, and that's how I was. Like you said, a simple sharing. One light, or just a simple sharing. You never know who going to pick it up and run with it. And, and like you said, that's how we support one another by simply just, like you said, that one little two second of effort. It ain't word of mouth is something, you know, it's something real still. That one like, that one share. We know with Instagram and TikTok, they're the main marketing tool now. But you you spot on, man. I'm thinking you got to do a share. One thing there uh, that you said, too, is we got to learn how to 
support ourselves. If you ain't really see, if I see, like, like I said, I'm the type of guy who I got my hands in so many different things and I could be connected into so many situations. Like you said, like you just said, I don't know nothing. I can't know everything. People always t- like it come off like I think I know everything. And it's like you can't possibly know everything. You got to understand where you're weak and where you're strong. And you got to know if you get with somebody who's strong where you're weak, then that makes you a better individual. But <clears throat> saying that to say, if I see that you have a business and you're not serious about your business, then there's no reason for me to be serious about it. I can't care more about your situation than you do. You can't be in a situation where you're in, you got a podcast and you're in a room full of media folks and you don't say shit. Like you ain't got no merchandise. My bad. Custom hustle, uh, jerseys, free uh, wristbands come with the jerseys. You're saying Man, wristbands so. are available to, to be purchased on their own $2 a piece. I'm mad for any purchase. Yeah. Any purchase on custom <laughs> hustle. Um, yes. But yeah, you can't be in a situation where you're in a room with people who are in that field and you don't say shit. You can't be at Fashion Week and don't got your own shit on with a clothing line. Like, you can't be uh, at a networking event and don't network. Like, so, like you just said, like, I'm talking about my situation and then that led to, oh, damn, well, yeah, my folks, I just did their podcast and then that helps them out. But if you're too scared to talk about this shit, if you're too scared to help yourself out, if you just like, oh, yeah, I posted it, niggas know, how they know? It's 4,000 podcasts that come out every day. So how do they know about yours if you ain't tell them about it? If you yeah. ain't putting it in their face, if you're not making it a priority for somebody. That's why I tell niggas all the time, check them DMs because the episode is there. Yeah. And you, you're right, cause man. Your grind is something serious, man. Like, your grind and your effort and your preparation is something serious. And I admire that. And even me on the other end looking, the first thing that comes to my mind, dropping my spirit, media team. And the thing about it, I have a, my motto is, man, you got to get it with those. I, I like everyday people. I don't want flash. Flash ain't track nothing. I tell people all the time, Jesus ain't you the flash of the flag to go around and do ministry. He got them same cats out of the mud. They were homeboy. They called them the site, but they were homeboy. Not to get on that tip, but authentic people always give the best product. Cause just like you, man, your work at the pour out every time, just like when you did the episode on love language, when you did the one with Casey and Jay Moon, when you did the one by the top five filler rapper, you were putting out names that nobody never heard of and they failed to realize feeling part of that East Coast way too, but to say, man, I just applaud you for your work at what you're doing. Cause even like right now, you already geared toward the next month. And to me, I just take a mental note. So, man, let me let me get some of that grind. Let me let that transfer over here to do what I need to do. But I just want to applaud you what you're doing, dog. I mean, I appreciate the love. Uh, there's one thing I always tell people. First line of the episodes, every episode is appreciate you hitting the button. Because I appreciate you hitting the button. I appreciate niggas tapping in to see what the fuck is going on. Uh, like I said, it's this thousand podcasts come out every day, and you got to find a way to make yourself unique, different, and special. And I'll tell motherfuckers all the time: you can listen to anything, but you ain't gonna get me from them. And my shit is called How to Hustle for a reason, because I watched it all. I watched that all like everybody. I watched everybody hustle and try to pick and choose things from other people's personalities and other people's situations and say to me, uh. uh this hustle is not the hustle that I want to go to. This ain't my lane. But I can use yeah. those same tactics, those same mentality and all that shit and structure it into something else. And that's why everything is how to hustle. It's how to hustle podcasts, how to hustle cleaning, how to hustle seminars, custom hustle. Like, uh, like. it's all it's all that just because it's all about your mentality. It's all about how you going to go about it. Like I said, can't, ain't nobody going to care about my shit more than me because I'm going a million miles an hour about mine. Because if you really want to turn this shit into something, it all starts with you. You can't put that on nobody else about all oh, my folks ain't supporting, they not they not sharing, they not liking. You got to be doing that groundwork. You got to be putting it in their face and making them see it. Now, mm-hmm. if they see it and they don't like it, uh, by all means, this is not the lane mm-hmm. for you. Like, you got people who say, like, can you stop sending me the joint? Copy that. You'll never get another joint out of me. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. could jump on the train. You could jump on the train now, or you could jump on it in two years when you say, "Oh damn, hype! You doing this, that, or whatever?" Yeah, that's what's up. Appreciate the love, <laughs> and that's yeah. all I'm gonna give you. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But you brought up those couple of episodes. Uh, shout out to Bob and T uh, on the Love Language episode, and uh, shout out to Nye, uh from Two Kings Two One Five podcast. Uh, yeah. Somebody hit me though too, um, and said like, "Damn, I never even heard of half of these rappers that you had on this list." And I'm like, "That was the entire point of that episode." Uh, it was to give you the people that I like, to give you the shit that's in mm-hmm. my phone. 
Like, yeah, we could easily mm-hmm. just go politics and go uh, Beans, Meek, uh, Black Thought, Will Smith. <laughs> like, we could easily, <laughs> yeah. easily give you. I could easily give you that list of who sold the most albums. But if mm-hmm. I'm gonna be honest with you, which I'm gonna always do, my honesty might come uh, as criticism to you. It might come as something that's brutally honest, but it's gonna always be what I really think. And yeah. Like I said, out of my phone, what I got in my phone is them niggas that I told y'all about. <laughs> yeah. Them, them, them cats raw, man. Them cats raw. You, That's what's saying. Like, then I, I used that platform also to every day on the page like, uh, that week, it was put one put some of their music out. Here's a sample of the joint in the story. You click this, just hear this 30 seconds, and maybe you're going to go to his Spotify now, his Apple Music, and now you're going to go listen to it, and you become a fan mm-hmm. of this shit. That was the entire point of that episode. Uh, because the whole thing was it was Philly support Philly because the two Kings two one five is from Philly obviously. Yeah, uh, yeah. So shout dope, out to my man. man. Shout out to my man Nutmeg Nah. <laughs> I told you yeah. you ain't living <laughs> that one down. Um, yeah. All right, so now let's switch it up and get dive into UCT. Talk to the okay. talk to the listeners about uh, the June team situation. That's how we ended up doing this episode. That's how this conversation came about. Uh, you sent me the, the link and told me to look at these videos and shit. Whoever, let me start here. Whoever edited that first video, <laughs> shout out to that yeah. nigga. His editing game is yeah. on bean, okay? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, Man, let's talk to the people about that. the Juneteenth situation. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm going to give Jake a shout out on this. Um, Jake, he one that did the editing. You know, like we said, pass them on. And it's so crazy to kind of go on this topic here is my relative put me on him. Once again, black relative, black videographer, supporting one another. Copy you that. Know that 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 one word, but uh, man, Juneteenth coach exploding is something that is near and dear to my heart, and it started off as a purpose. Really, it started off as a vision. I ain't even understand. I had a vision. It's just me being honest. When God gave me that vision, I didn't understand I would have it. I was doing it out of place of love. Cause in 2020, we all witnessed the death of uh, George Floyd. You know, mm-hmm. when the world was on par with witness, so I remember just saying, I said, man, what it is I can do? I'm not, a, like you say, I'm not a protester. And at the time, it was just me doing it for my friends and family. Hey, man, they do this out of love. You go back and check on my page. I said, I told y'all being fun. I said, I told y'all this started in the house. The first ever Juneteenth Coach Explosive started at the house. It had no name yet. We gave it a name in January. And we were sitting here and we were just, I was like, hey, man, we got to do this. I said, this right here for the people. It's a rejuvenation for the people, and we celebrate them with a purpose to get not just Atlanta, but to get our people into celebrating our Freedom Day. And I was literally just being, I turned into a militant. I won't say I turned, yeah, I turned into a militant. Let me start lying. So I turned into a militant. I said, why are we celebrating the holiday that still say on the, on paper in the Constitution that is written that we are three-fifths of a person? When we came here the same way then, why are we celebrating it? We got some of our own. I like Let's stop putting our energy into everything else and put that energy into our holiday, which is Juneteenth. And I call it Culture Explosion because just like Nip said, the one that had verses on Blue Laces too. He said uh, they call it dumb, you know, all the other stuff. He said because our culture is contagious. So if our culture is so contagious. Call us dumb niggas because our culture is contagious. That's the shit right there. Man, I'm trying to tell you. And so look, let me, speaking of that, this is what I got right here, like you were saying. There you How go, you get, your shit some, shit. get your shit off, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then, I'm, even like right now, we working on enhancing the logo and the whole thing there to catch the eye, like, what is that? And every, every the beginning is that pop, that Chad with Bozeman, that Nip, and that DMX, because every last one of them contributes something so valuable to our culture in an intimate, sincere way that one trying to be like nobody else, and that's why I chose them guys as the mirror for the logo. We understand the past. Now they get something that represent the present of the culture to still stay in line with what we're saying with the culture explosion. But um, we put together a five-year plan. Now we're working on a 10-year plan because we all going to meet five. So the whole thing is this year we're going to do a two-day celebration where we're going to do a spiritual summit and working on some keynote speaker to get there. The reason why I say spiritual summit, go back to the purpose of the culture explode, the rejuvenation of the people. Because sometimes you got to deposit that positivity in the people. And the message that we're delivering this year that I, um, it was right here was done one day at work. Matter of fact, when I got a phone with you. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so the, the message that we're going to deliver this year is um, at the Spirit of Summit is 
owning your ugly, true, correct relatability that defines purpose. Say that and one more just, time. So, so wait, wait, wait. Say that one more time. <laughs> Give me that again. <laughs> gotcha. Um, owning your ugly truth creates relatability that defines purpose. We might and, have an episode there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why I said say that one more time. We might have an yeah. episode there. <laughs> and it's needed, man. Do it. Because one thing about it, I, I want you to do it. And the reason why we're doing that because we have a lot of, but our young people, even when our grown people, there's a lot of depression and anxiety going on due to we are judging ourselves on the next person, trying to be something that we are not. And we get caught up in that because sometimes as a person, and to be honest, we all as a child, as a teenager, even as a, as a young college student, when I caught myself doing that, I had to snap out of it. Now I said, hold on, that ain't me. But going to this is right here to to give hope and to redefine spirits, man, to really get people on saying, like, there's nothing wrong with being you. Being you is a story for a testimony on down the road. Being you is going to shape you into the greater you that's on down the road. So continue being you because there's nobody else like you. Don't never stop See, being you. Uh, I One thing, uh, I knew this already. Obviously, this is how we got to do the episode. This is why I just let you rock because I think, like I said, that this is something that we we need to know. We need to know that this is going on and something that you was going to something that where that I was going to take you that you went there before I got there is the kids. But like you just said, uh, being yourself and don't try to be the next anybody. Try to be the first you, because like I like I just stated, when we talking about the podcast. There's only one me. You can't get me going to anywhere else in the world like and you should, everybody should have that type of mentality and that type of thought about themselves. You shouldn't be trying to be the next little son, such and such or the next, you, you shouldn't be trying to be the next of somebody else. Yeah. You should be trying to perfect being the first you. Uh, but something that you was taking it to, how do we get the younger generation to understand and be involved in the culture mm -hmm. explosion? Because we got a whole older generation, like you said, the 4th yeah. of July is just a thing that's been embedded into you since the beginning of forever. Uh, which one thing about us, though, Memorial Day, Fourth of July, Labor Day, we're not out here. That's not us mm -hmm. is going about the flag soldiers and all of that. We just, oh, we yeah. got the grill out today and we having mm -hmm. niggas over the crib. But how do yeah. we get <laughs> how do we get uh, people to actually understand what the culture explosion is about? How do we get the youth involved in that situation? Because like mm -hmm. you said, I love the fact that you said we had a five-year plan, now we got a 10-year plan, which means you're structuring it, which means you're trying to see a bigger vision for the situation, which is all, which, I, which is what I'm all about. So I love that. Mm -hmm. But how do you get the youth involved in it? Well, one way I started by apparel. So now we're getting ready to uh, launch all the cultures for the apparel. And so for me, working in the school system, my students is direct contact to the youth former and current mm -hmm. and just like what we're talking about i go around putting them on game but we also putting together a social media team and just like i went to all my people when it started i knew who i needed to birth it with and i said everybody's in this vision but i said i know who i got to birth the will i know who god showing me who to birth the will and that the social media team is going to be the one how we get it out and we're going to use that tip top tongue and we also have a 25 year old marketing person that have this that's, that's high up there that's going to help her with it because as I tell them, you are the torchbearer. You all are going to carry it because we had to get them in them because with the youth, going back to the directly ask your question, we also going to do a men and documentary this year. Okay. That we're going to get out there because I want people to see the process, the ugly process, the nose, the, 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 the I ain't with that because don't, even though this is something great, a lot that's of people ain't jumped on the train yet. All of that part yeah. that you're talking about, that's the beauty. The, the the work the work is the part that I love. That's the part that you're talking about. All people just see how the side the people don't know how the sausage is made. They just see them fried up in the pan. <laughs> but mm -hmm. that's the that's exactly. the great part is being able to being able to look back on it and say, like, I earned this shit. Like I did that yeah. work that had to be put in there. I got that blood, sweat, and tears in there. And like that's the part that's the beauty. And yeah, show them that part. Show them that it ain't it ain't easy. Nothing is easy unless you're gonna win the lottery. It ain't gonna be easy. Mm -hmm. Look, we already out here like our coaches are already getting prostituted. 
because they they take our culture, they capitalize off the head, and we want to put that effort. So the whole thing is, let's shit. put this, let's put this <laughs> effort, in, and and look, and I come at it with just like I, I come at it with love, because what the one thing we uh, as black people, as our beautiful black people, one thing that we do so well is we know how to come together and have a good time. We know how to get over the BS that the world already get to us, so we know how to overcome that. And so that was the whole part of the culture explosion, but we already knew that we were going to grow into three days. We that they were going to become a three day event. And this year we started with year two. We knew that. And the whole thing is, is like to rejuvenate our people. Because sometimes we need, as Luther say, the bad boys are having the party. Just to give your heads up, this year is a day party brunch, 80s edition style. Yeah, I got and to we too. Ooh, yeah. No, All right. Right. yeah. <laughs> okay. Everybody was swinging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and look, and this is what we're going to do. And so another way to get it out to the young people, young people listen to radio too. You know, when they ride in the car in the morning, then you know what I'm saying, with the social media is I'm applying that pressure to the radio station this year. I'm talking about 107.9, 94.5. And most of the young people that listen to the streets, 94.5. With young jock and shout a shout. And man, shout it. We don't stay too far from one another. And you know, we ran up one uh ran up on one another one down some humble stuff at the tie shop with the Jamaicans. And you know, once again supporting black. And so um to get them to do a mix. Cause you know how like you know, you know, like I remember like when Morgan Day come, you got all the radio stations from SM, the syndicated radio, everybody doing the mix. And then what, what made me so upset, let me just go on call, like, what pissed me off, I'm riding in the car Juneteenth. Yes, it's raining. Just got through meeting the real Rick Rock. Man, just got through chopping it up. This Juneteenth. They do an empathetic crime rap. This is Juneteenth. I'm like, what the f-? I'm like, <laughs> That's the subliminal <laughs> messaging, bro. Yeah, I'm like, y'all ain't got no five minutes that y'all going to put on here, man. It's, it's, you know, I'm like, man, this. And that thing, no, I put on some music. I'm going down, you know, down 75, getting on 285, rocking. This Juneteenth, I'm going up and ball like, hey, you ain't got nothing to do. Did the Juneteenth coach spoke tonight, the first of the annual one. We got live performance. We got the hot of DJ in Atlanta, which we really did. And we served the people free food, man. Because I feel mm-hmm. like this, you can't, you can't, I think I know. What we did last year and what we continue doing, it'll be given to the people, we give it to the culture. Because I feel like you can't always take from people. Sometimes you got to give the people love, especially those that look like us. Okay, at the end of the day, yeah, I know you paid $30 for this. You got some free food. Thank you for coming. And it's raining. Thank you for coming. Man, the, the review that we got from the first one, the video still don't do it no just. People were like, man, it felt like a family reunion. One thing that you that you continue to harp on that I love, uh, and this is shout out to the Kickback app, uh, the Dollar Station that I'm on. They got sure. all black owned businesses in the uh, all black owned businesses in the what is it Seventh Park Ave store I believe or Fifth Park Ave store. My bad, Ron. I don't remember the exact name, but it's on the app. You download the Kickback app. You listen to the How to Hustle podcast on your Wednesday mornings and evenings. Um, gotcha. You know what I'm saying <laughs> you can see that it's all black owned. Everything on there is black owned. But it's not even just support black owned. We have to support quality black owned. Just because it's black owned doesn't mean that I need to just waste my money if you're giving out a BS product. If you have a quality product, you're providing a quality service. Like you said, you got the real estate agent, you got the marketing, you got the tire shop. If you were supplying me with quality, then I'm all for it. I'm not mm-hmm. just for you black, so I'm going to just go waste my money. And I know y'all don't know how to answer the phone. Y'all got the bags fucked up whenever I show up. <laughs> Quality <laughs> situations, y'all. Not just because we black or we support. Yeah. Everybody got a business these days. Everybody's got a hustle. But we have to have quality mm-hmm. situations. <laughs> Let's make sure we throw that in there with that. All mm-hmm. Like I said, all for supporting black owned everything. My parents was adults when I was born. My dad was 40. My mom was 37. So I yeah. was a child. I had to go see Rosewood. I had to watch Roots. Once upon a time, we were colored. I'm a star. Yeah, I'm. I know about all of that. So yeah, yeah. Don't lose me with none down. of that, or confuse me yeah. with anybody who doesn't know the history and been caught up into those situations. But like I said, just because we black, don't mean that we got to waste money with each other. We have to support quality situations. We have to supply mm-hmm. the people with a quality uh, service for whatever business it is that you are involved in. Yep, and um, man, and that's what the world too, dog. And I like man, that thing ran so smooth. 
I was like, boy, God got his hand all up in there. But that's how, even with the catering, we knew the cater from a spot that we had to go to, black guy, man, just like us, John, energetic. Everybody to the day still talked about how good that food was. And he killed it. And guess what? He, he hit us over the head with the price. But he, him and his pops, they did a lot of love. And for serving 150 plus people, we didn't run out of food. And even then, we was at it. We was at it because I'm about to give you the authentic truth. We was at event center. How much? How much alcohol and stuff we had? You would have thought that we were actually at a club and getting wholesale liquor. That just, <laughs> man. Look, me and my brothers, the team, people that love our friends, the family that love us. They were just pouring into it. Man, we prepared for that like it was nothing the whole time. We were like, we don't care but three people up in there. We still going to go in there and have a good time because we doing it for a purpose. And just like you said, this is not even my lane. I don't like doing this. It just, this is something with a purpose that need to be done. And then something that needs, yeah, this is a need that needs to be, this is something that needs to be filled right there. Uh, yeah. Again, find a lane and dominate the lane. Uh, there's yeah. a lane there. This is a very important situation, like I said, that I felt. But man, you had this initial conversation that I told you from the rip. Nah, we talking about this on the podcast. I don't know yeah. how we're turning it into an episode, but we turn this into an episode. It's an easy way for us oh, to yeah. do that. Um, oh, yeah. So I definitely, definitely appreciate you coming on to talk about this situation. But uh, we're not going to give it to them all in one shot. You know, this is the podcast sure. drive that we like to get you in and out. Let the people know where they can follow you at so that they can continue to follow the culture explosion. And be tapped into the two-day situation that we got going on this next year, should I say? Next year, not this year. Oh, yeah. But so, man, y'all can follow me on Instagram at d.entertainer09, on Facebook at Corey E. Thomas. But everything will be on Instagram at d.entertainer09. Look for some starting in January. I'm starting to put out the, the apparel. The uh, dropping little niggas that, 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 that uh, leading up to Juneteenth. Even in May, and I'm going to say this before we get off, there's nothing wrong with Cinco de Mayo, but pay attention when you go into the restaurant. Do you see one Mexican need Mexican restaurant? There's nobody but us up in there putting all that energy to the drink, and half of us don't even speak uh, Spanish. That's no offense. Mexican got a whole different way how they celebrate the day of the dead and what they stand for. And here it is. We got Juneteenth. You starting to see TV show putting in on. Uh, forgive me for I, I love this. I'm passionate about it because this is for us. It's for the people. And, man, get ready to start coming to Atlanta, man, for a three-day weekend. And you be like, we going out of for, man, Juneteenth Cold Explosion. Um, this, this we're gonna, I'm giving you what's on wax right now. It's going to start off with a spiritual summit. When it gets to three-day, this year going to be a spiritual summit to start off. The Cold Explosion, all we're going to be on tonight. The Ashla party after that. A gospel jamboree on Sunday and the Ashley June team day are going to start being a big parade with a lot of the top HBCU bands going to be there. They say, I believe in speaking into existence. That's part of the plan that we put on paper that we're working towards too. And we standing behind celebrating with the purpose, getting our people to put their energy into it. And it's starting by us doing the dirty work, getting these hands dirty, hearing the no before we hear the yes, and having that perseverance to still stand at the door so I know it's going to open. Just because the door closed don't mean the next one gonna close. And that's what we're doing. We're giving the people something that we can love, man. Our holiday. That's why even in my head right now, I'm such a visionary. Even in my head right now, I'm hearing raw way, rad to riches. Rad to riches. The reason why I like that song when we get in the park second, look, we out the mud now. So now we about to love on us and celebrate who we are, celebrate that perseverance and the freedom. Celebrate the perseverance our ancestors, celebrating the freedom for right now. And also celebrating the growth we'll be getting ready to go to. Because we're not ignorant like they like to say we are. And we all civilized people. And we're going to love each other to, to light. Not the devil, but to light. At that Juneteenth code explosion. Um, I appreciate you coming on, CT. Uh, this is back-to-back Atlanta guests, actually, for me. Shout out to Kendra Crump on, on last week's okay. episode. Um, <laughs> but, uh, uh-huh. yeah. How to Hustle Seminars. How to Hustle Seminars is starting this Sunday. How to Hustle Seminars starts this Sunday. Hit me up. Find out how you can pay for the situation. It's a five-week situation. Like I said, I'll be putting it out there to every week what it will be specifically about and how we can help build your brand. Uh, shout out to the E-Block Network for bringing us on. Um, be looking for a Sunday station. Looking for seven days, seven cities. 
So right now we six cities in six, six we five cities six days. So trying to get a couple more situations locked in. Uh, but yeah, custom hustle jerseys on Instagram and H2H cleaning. And I appreciate y'all for hitting the button. Welcome to the Hot Hustle Podcast. We are out.